Hello, Bill Molito here with Bill's War Game World. All right, a couple quick things. Um, this channel will only have miniature wargaming on it or board with war games from now on. Um, I have the new channel, um, Bill's History World and Goober the Traveling Bear with four subscribers. So if you want to see my history videos when I go to battlefields or museums, that's where they will be. And uh, as far as miniatures, well, we're doing a Band of Brothers Worthington Games game in 54 millimeter. We're taking the board game and turn it into a miniature game. Let's take a look, everyone. All right, we have 54 millimeter figures, mostly painted by Jim Shaw. And what we have here is two squads of six riflemen. One squad is six riflemen, another squad is six riflemen, a BAR man, a lieutenant. We have two sergeants with some machine guns. We have a flamethrower, a bazooka team. And over here on the left, we have our machine gun team. So we have several elements of Marines. Their mission, they received word that there is uh, munitions somewhere out here in Guadalcanal that were left behind by the Japanese. Their orders are to secure the munitions or destroy them. Well, there's the munitions. Um, they came in the uh, Alamo playset. Pretty cool. We got some uh, ammunition boxes and such. Um, haven't painted them yet, but oh well. All right, so what are we missing? We're missing Japanese. And how are we going to resolve that? Well, we're going to use a playing card the deck to activate and when I get a red card a heart diamonds will activate units to move that are Japanese and then of course black cards I can activate an element of my Marines however a red heart brings out a Japanese unit so let's pause the camera I'll show you how that's gonna work Okay, what I've done is I've typed up a sheet of a list of different things that can happen with red cards. So, uh, anything from a sniper to a machine gun bunker to a Japanese tank. Somewhere out here. And when one joker comes up, that means the Marines have received orders that they may be stopping. When the second joker comes up, they have orders to fall back and the game is over. Uh, so, on our deck of playing cards, if we drew a six of heart, for example, which I had laying out, it is a 37 millimeter gun in a small bunker. All right, well, that doesn't help us a lot. We now know we have to find a Japanese cannon in a small bunker to put on the table. But where's the location? Well, we're using the Peter Dice once again. So it's two feet out by one foot in. There we go. So we're going to measure out. So we start off to here. And I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't. All right. So, the first foot, we go in a foot in, so two feet is at that yellow die, and then two feet o over, which is 24 inches. So right there is where we place our, our bunker. All right, so we have, I've gained my, my gun, and there's our bunker. So that was our card six. And um, it does not fire. Uh, so on our deck of cards. And bring them out there. So the way this would work next is we flip another card. And it's a queen. And it's black. So... Um, Two Marine units 
can be activated. They can move, they can shoot. Um, so I would now probably move up my flamethrower or bazooka team. Um, the bunker also has to be seen and I would roll a test for that and check the measurement um, because it's sort of camouflaged as you can see and we'll just check if Lieutenant Dan and Lieutenant Dan sees it with a six so he knows that that's a bunker so I would move up a unit now when we get a diamond such as this that is a Japanese move or fire card so now that bunker uh, let's say I moved up these um, the infantry up there nine inches or so and uh, they do have grenades so and I would bring up my flamethrower and then the artillery piece would fire and then depending on casualties of course then we flip a card now a diamond is another Japanese fire phase so the Japanese would fire again and a heart is uh, the king of hearts brings on seven Japanese figures a leader a flag bearer a light machine gun and four riflemen would appear and once again we'd find out the location so it's four feet out because we're adding we're adding a foot to our distance so we're there and let's see yep you can see that now we have to find out how far in and it comes in at the extreme right side so right there where that big yellow die is behind the palm tree alright we would have a squad of seven Japanese soldiers and for that particular card they are not dug in they're on patrol so they would be moving up uh, so they would be placed and then we flip a card again and another Japanese unit would arrive and with a four it's another 37 millimeter gun and it's in a bunker also so we'd roll the location for that and hopefully we would get some black cards and there's a nine so my Marines would fire again or move and that is basically my solo system for the Marines playing the Worthington scenarios with my beer and pretzel rolls. Uh, I think, of course, my black cards, um, I will have a few that will be inter be added that I will have, a, you know, a Sherman tank comes in or reinforcements. And this entire uh, solo card activation and uh, solo play is coming from Walt Leach's Pony War games that we play at his house. So this is a way for me to run uh, a Japanese Pacific game in, uh, without anyone being over here. Hey, that's about it for now. I'll probably run a full video of this game in the next couple days and then post it for the uh, war game site. Thank you, stay safe, be kind, be courteous, and I hope you enjoyed this little uh, introduction to uh, the Pacific War.